Open your Bible with me, please, to 1 Chronicles chapter 4. 1 Chronicles chapter 4. Yeah, it's uh, one of the best things I guess we could all do is take and just try to make a study, a study of all the prayers in the Bible from uh, the very beginning all the way up through to the end. Uh, you know, I, you, we say, well, we don't know how to pray, but we really do. We just don't, we think we have to form words like everybody else when in fact, basically, God just wants us to talk from our heart and what's on our mind and sometimes it may not be a lot. I know when Peter prayed, save me, Lord, it was just really needful right then. He was sinking and he felt he was going to drown. So it's not a very long prayer, but he said what he needed to say. And God doesn't have to, have to have all of the intelligent words to know what we mean. As a matter of fact, the scripture teaches us that the Holy Spirit is the one that really takes the words that we say and turns them where God knows what we mean. And so we don't have to uh, listen to someone else pray and say, well, I can't pray like that. God help us not to want to be like that, just to be us. I, don't, I'm, I personally like to be around someone that's a, they're the same, whether they're in church or out in the public life somewhere, just be you. And... Uh, and then, then I, I personally liked the pastor that was here before me because of that. It didn't make any difference where you saw him. He, he never put on any air. He was the same all the time. And that's uh, that. I said if I would want to be like anyone, I would like to. I would want to be like that. The way Brother Kermit Johnson was here in, in this uh, First Chronicles. We have a, a name of a man that you only have one time in the Bible. And I'll, I'll read verse 9 and 10 with you. It says, And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my coast and that thine hand might be with me and that thou wouldest keep me from evil that it might not, may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. It's not a very long uh, prayer, uh, but the Bible teaches us right up front he was an honorable man and it was his mother that named him, not his father. He was a man of prayer. That is, he prayed intelligently. He knew who he was talking to. He prayed to the God of Israel. He also prayed earnestly. He said, oh, that thou wouldest. I'm talking to you, and I'm asking you. And he prayed definitely that you would bless me. And then he prayed effectually because God granted what he asked. Uh, I want to just share four petitions in, in this prayer with you. And number one is that it was a prayer of blessing. He said, oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. The word for bless means to give me benefit you can actually benefit me with what I'm going to ask you for. And I know that God does that. And he asked that it be a blessing. He said, bless me indeed, meaning make it a sure thing. I want you to make it a surety. I, I, I want it like I, you're making an oath to me that you're going to do it. So he's talking to, to God, and God is listening to him. But he said, bless me, meaning that he wanted spiritual power. 
uh, Brother Charlie mentioned in our Sunday school lesson that when we uh, go out uh, to talk or go and talk with anyone, that I, actually the Lord is with us. The Lord is not leaving us by ourselves. He's there with us all the time that we're witnessing uh, to people. And so he said he wanted to be blessed with the spiritual power that God could give. That was his request, and a request for also spiritual victory. I don't, you know, I like my comfort zone. And when I read this prayer, and I remember the very first time that I read this prayer, and he asked some things in his prayer that I thought, oh, Lord, I'm not sure I want that. I mean, I'm already feel like I've got enough, you know. I'm, uh, and, but he uh, he was asking God to uh, give him victorious life and uh, request for uh, unusual power, a power knowing that hey, this is God working and not me. I I know that God works that way. I've seen it in my ministry. I've seen it in my life. I've seen I've seen God's. Uh, you know, take his stand to show that this is my man, and God has blessed me that way, and I, and I know he does that with you. Uh, I was sharing with someone, uh, you know, about our daughter. Uh, she was probably about 13, maybe, I don't know, uh, but how quick God can respond to you and answer a prayer that one sometime in the middle of the morning she came into our bedroom and, and said mom and something like that and that's it. And she just passed out on our bed and it scared me. I mean, all I could think of is God help us. And that was just like that is over. I was, I thought something real bad and I guess it was bad enough she passed out, you know. But immediately everything's okay. And that's sort of like Peter's prayer, Lord save me. And then he immediately saved him from drowning. But, you know, God listens to you, and he gives spiritual power, and he gives a power that's strength that you know it's him. It's like I was sharing, and I don't say this to share this with you to make you think I have anything more than you do or anyone else. I'm telling you there's no, only the only one between you and our Father in heaven is Jesus Christ. You do not have to have me or anyone else to go to God for you, even though we should be willing to pray one for another. But as I was sharing with you about the lady that had been given two days to live because she had cancer, and they opened her up and put her, sewed her back up and said she, she only has a couple of days. And I know God showed his hand of power right there in that life for those boys of hers. And I'm telling you, two days later, not only... Was she not in the hospital with cancer? She was sitting at her home, and they couldn't find any cancer in her. So I know that I told these kids, and we're not, these doctors are uh, are working according to what they've seen, and we don't d dishonor them. But I'm telling you, there's a God in heaven, and her boys did not really believe in that God in heaven, and they were man. I'm telling you, when I walked in that hospital, if their eyes could have cut me in pieces, they would have cut me in pieces. That's how mean they were, but. I, their sister, they had one sister that called me to come there. And God showed his hand for those kids right in the presence of their mother that she was up and sitting at a campfire there, uh, where they were cooking out outside of their home two days later instead of being ready to plant in the, the earth. No, I didn't have anything to do with that any more than saying God can do more than the doctors and that God brought, he brought glory to himself in the presence of these kids so that they could see the power of God. And I've seen God work that way. I don't believe in healing like some people do. I believe that no one would ever be sick if, if uh, preachers could lay their hands on and pray for everybody. There wouldn't be anybody in the, in the funeral homes if preachers could do all that. I believe in the power of God to do that, but only to bring more glory to him, not, not to just raise people up so they can get up and go and live for the devil again. And again and again, and that's what happens a lot of times when they do get well. But I'm saying I believe in the power of God to be able to show it through our lives so people can know and we can know God is working. And that's what Jabez was asking. Give me, uh, bless me in indeed. I want it to be a powerful and sure thing that everybody can see. 
You know, in Genesis, in chapter 32, if you'd like to turn back there, and I'm not going to read but just a few verses, but I know if you know the story about Jacob and Esau, where Jacob stole Esau's birthright, and then he uh, uh, was blessed, and Esau was going to kill him. And, and the mother found out about it and sent Jacob away. And I mean, we're talking about 21 years later at least, Jacob knew that Esau wanted to kill him. And so he's returning back to his homeland. And they said, uh, Esau's uh, come out to meet you. Uh, and Jacob got really afraid because Esau had 400 men with him. And he, got, he was really afraid that I'm going to, I'm going to die. <laughs> and the coward, he put his wife and children out in front. And then the others in front. And he's back here. You know, it's kind of like a, a buck deer. They always let the, let the female deer go out and get in the open, and then if they stand out there long enough, I guess they'll venture to come out, you know. But Jacob was a coward, and he sent all this up front. If I kill this one, then this one can escape, then I can escape too is what he's thinking. But notice his prayer in verse 9. He said, and Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, the Lord, which said unto me, Return unto thy country and to thy kindred, and I will deal well with thee. He's actually reminding God that you told me now you're going to bless me and you're going to take care of me, and here's my brother out there, and he's going to kill me. I know he is. He said, I am not worthy of the least of all the, mer thy, the mercies and of all the truth which thou hast showed unto thy servant. For with my staff I passed over this Jordan, and now I am become uh, two bands. Deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him lest he will come and smite me and the mother of, with the children. And thou sayest, I will surely do thee good and make thy, uh, thy seed as the sand of, uh, of the sea, which cannot be numbered, for a multitude. I'm reminding you, God, <laughs> it's not going to happen if you let him kill me. You know, I'm, it's kind of funny, really, but that's the way we get, and that's okay with God. And God answered his prayer, and, and if you read the rest of the story, then you find that whenever uh, they came, Jacob was a little leery still whether he should go and meet with his brother. But then at the end, they fall on each other and weeping, so glad to see each other. It wasn't to be killed at all. But even then, Esau told Jacob, you can, you go ahead. And he still wasn't <laughs> sure. So he said, no, no, I got all these children. And I, you know, he used all the excuses he could. And I got all these flocks and so forth. You go ahead. <laughs> and I can see you then. I can see whether you're up to something. What I'm saying is we don't always pray believing, but we pray we know it. We know God can do anything but fail, but we don't always trust him when we ask him for something. And sometimes uh, we, he's always blessing, and we say, I'm not sure of this. I'm still not sure, and that was Jacob. But he prayed, though, a short prayer, and God answered. It wasn't a long, drawn-out thing, and it wasn't a repetition uh, uh, over and over and over and over like that. It's just one clear statement to the one person that could help, God Almighty. And that's our, our prayer. Then it's also a prayer for enlargement. He said, uh, enlarge my coast. That was the one part of the prayer that I thought, oh no, I'm not sure I want to ask for that. For that. I, I mean, I've already got a load. <laughs> no, I, I don't know if I want more. You know, I, it's a it's, uh, I've got enough headaches. But then if you note the rest of the prayer, he didn't just ask for that. He got it. But he said, uh, you know, I'm just not satisfied. I've got my comfort zone here, but I'm not satisfied just with this. I want more. I want to be responsible for more. And so it showed that he was dissatisfied in his, with what he had. And we are too, folks. We can get a new home, and we want something else. 
we get new furniture, next thing you know, we want more or different. We're never satisfied with the attainments that we have. We just want more and more and more. And I guess that's the way we're made to be not satisfied with what we have. For after all, we're not in heaven yet. And then it speaks of a added responsibility. I'm ready to take on more. Give me more to work with. It speaks of the battles that's unfought. It's going to be some there. If you take on more responsibility, you're going to have more troubles that come with it. And, you know, I said that I, I said to Sonia, I think it was, I, I, I could raise a, a little three-year-old girl. I feel like I could. Boy either, but I meant for, uh, I feel like I could, but I'm too old to do that. <laughs> but uh, it's an, uh, wouldn't that be an awesome responsibility for a 74-year-old man to raise a three-year-old baby? And, and uh, I said, the only thing I know I would do is I would homeschool that kid and I would take her all over the United States of America and when she got through, she would know this country inside and out and, and could be the president of the United States and know so much. But it won't happen. I mean, it's just something I said I thought I could do uh, and would love doing it. But he said, enlarge my coast. I know I'm going to have more trouble. I've got more responsibility to that. I'll, I'll what I want. And then he had a, it was a prayer of, of, of God's companionship. I don't, want any, I don't want this alone. I don't like being alone to you. I don't. If you do, that's okay. I like it a little, just to think. <laughs> sometimes just to think. But sometimes I really don't want to be in that house over there. And I don't stay in that house a lot, I can tell you, by myself. You know, the boys are there. It's a lot different. But he said, I don't want to be alone in this now. I'm asking you to bless me, and I'm asking you to bless me uh, with a evidently that your power is in it and I and I also want uh, more responsibility but I don't want to be by myself in this and so he was uh, saying that thine hand might be with me uh, I don't want to be walking through this by myself uh, I know I might, might be older and, and don't have as much uh, upstairs working for me but I'm going to tell you something I'm not afraid of anything, and it's all because of God. I don't care. Hey, you know, someone said, well, you could get shot and killed. I said, that's right, and I'd be in heaven. And they'd probably be in jail. But I really ain't afraid of anything because I know where I'm going. Now, if I would have been a few years back, even in my young Christian life, I would be deathly afraid of whatever. I think sometimes I'm too too dumb to be afraid. It can be a tornado. It don't bother me. Hey, I don't want, I ain't going to do it. It's only going to do what it's going to do and I'm going to get, I'm not stupid. I'm not going to run over and get right in the middle of it so it'll blow me away. But if I run from it and it catches me anyway, what's the use of being afraid? I mean, you're just going to die and that's part of life. But you have to come to a point in your life where you trust Jesus. And he said, I will. And I'll get you. I'll, I'll take care of you. And when Paul said, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me, he was not playing with words. He was showing that he had a real trust. That even though people might kill him or try to kill him, he wasn't going to stop preaching the gospel. I stand right here to be arrested any time they decide to turn and fulfill the law that's on the book called hate crime. Well, I guess I'll just be preaching behind the bars of the sales of jail if, because I'm not going to say, oh, I think homosexual is right. It's right. It is a sin. I, do, I want it to be on record every time I say that. I do not hate homosexuals. It's their sin that 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 God hates, and I hate to sin with him. But I don't hate baby killers. I hate the fact that they sin and kill babies. So I'm not, that's a hate crime, though. They can arrest me anytime they want to when I preach 
against abortion or against uh, the so-called lifestyle or the sinful life of, of, uh, of the homosexual or lesbians. But what I'm telling you, you have to come to a point somewhere where you're just going to do what God says regardless of what the government or the law says. Hey, we've been in a free country for over 200 years. There's been a lot of people been thrown in jail and killed for doing what I do freely in this country. So don't be afraid of talking to people about Jesus. They, they can't really hurt you. Like my pastor used to say, they might cut my, they might cut our tongue out. They can't keep us from praying. Isn't that amazing? Uh, yeah. But he had, he wanted God's hand with him, and, and God with us makes a for a joyful life. And God being with us makes us to realize we're victorious. I'm more than conquerors through him that love me. You are too. Look at John 4, verse 35. When God's with us, it's, it's a rewarding life. I said John 4, I meant John 6, I'm sorry. John 6, 35. And, he, and, and Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that comes to me shall never hunger. And, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. In other words, it's a rewarding thing to know that not only are we saved, but there's two little uh, Greek words used for no wise, and it means not any way. Nothing can cause me to cast you out. I am with you. I'm not going to turn and read Romans uh, 8, 8 chapter and 35 through 39, but you need to read it and listen to it. You know, it talks about how, who, who shall condemn us. It's Christ that died for us. And it goes on. And what shall separate us from the love of Christ? And it talks about anything you can imagine, neither height nor depth nor any other creature or creation. Nothing can even be thought of or brought in the world that separate us from the love of God. The word, those words are translated never. Uh, ah, we, O-U-O-W-E. Ah, we, meaning not one thing. Not even you can cast, be, cast yourself away from Christ that calls him to be, cast you away. Jesus said, I have you in my hand, and no man can pluck you out of my hand. My Father, which is greater than all, has you in his hand, and no man can pluck you out of my Father's hand. And then we're taught that the Holy Spirit has sealed us until the day of redemption of the purchased possession. So what we're saying is, when God being with us, we don't, we're going to have an enjoyable, victorious life that we're living. We're certainly not in heaven yet, but we're close. And then last, he prayed for a sanctified life. He said that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that I may not, that it may not grieve me. That's a prayer that's, it's just like, uh, I pray every time I go out to the rock pile, I pray that uh, God, you know, I, I know you heard it, but just listen for a moment. God, please keep your animals off of your road that they won't hit your car and hurt your preacher. That's a that's a not very long prayer, is it? It's a short prayer, but it's a it's an honest prayer, and and that's the, that's the way I pray and ask God to just uh, take care of me. But I also pray this when I'm heading. Uh, and through the day, Lord, protect me from the evils of the world that I might not be grieved by them. That's a prayer Jabez prayed. 
I can pray that. You can pray that. And only God knows how many times he's protected us from the evil of the world that we might not be, that it might not grieve us. So this is a, a prayer that, that we need to learn for ourselves. God bless me and bless me indeed. I want to, I want people to see you working in my life. I got a card from my daughter, and uh, and it, <laughs> it it said those words. I'm glad I can always see Jesus in your life. I don't know as I always show that, but that's what she said, and I'm I'm grateful that she sees that in my life, and I hope that's what everybody can see: the love of Christ in me. Oh. Uh, also, that we would want to be ready to take on more responsibility <coughs> as he would give it to us because we know his hand is going to be, like the psalm says, hand in hand with Jesus, walking along with him, and that we live an honorable life. Uh, God can deliver us from any and everything, but he's also already uh, delivered us by saving our souls from an eternal damnation in hell, and that he's with us, keeping us. Uh, the word keep means like a garrison. Put a garrison around me. Put guards around me and protect me because I'm weak. The flesh is weak but the Spirit's willing, and I need your protection so the Spirit will be able to do what it's willing to do. So you guide and direct and keep me from the evil of the world that I won't be grieved over it. I don't know if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior or not, but I tell you it's a wonderful thing to know him and to know that he's the one that paid the price on Calvary's cross when he died. He died for us. Uh, we have a t-shirt we got last year from camp, I believe it was last year, in front of it says Amazing Grace, and then the back, you know, verse on the scripture, uh, a scriptural verse on the back, and it's, uh, for by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourself, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. God was gracious enough to let his son come into this world and die for you, pay your hell for you, and to bury him and to raise him up, showing that he is victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And all he's asking is that you as the sinner accept him as the Savior. From the heart, man believes in the righteousness, with the mouth, profession is made in salvation. When you believe, I don't believe you'll be ashamed to profess it. But he that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son hath not life. And I'm encouraging you as we stand to accept Jesus Christ as your own personal Savior and go away with the peace in your heart that this is the day of salvation. As the as, as, uh, Corinthian letter puts it, Today is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. Don't put it off. It's easy to do, but don't put it off. You know, last week we had a young man killed. Just breaks my heart for the parents. And the young man that just got himself in trouble for whatever causes him to do that. We've had so much happen right around here. It makes me aware how much, how important it is that people, when they hear the gospel, they accept Christ there and then, not later. This is the day to accept Jesus. What page? Page 123. The very first verse.